House Democrats held a news conference today with several mayors from across the country who were in Washington, D.C. for their annual winter meeting. The mayors discussed how the government shutdown was affecting their communities and stressed the need for Congress and the president to come to an agreement. All right, everybody's set? Everybody up here set? All right, you guys, thanks a lot for coming out. Really appreciate it. I'm Sherry Bustos. I'm a member of Congress from downstate Illinois. And the reason I'm pointing out that I am in downstate Illinois is because what you see in front of you are members of Congress from all over the country and mayors from all over the country, most of whom represent bigger towns than most of the kind of towns that I represent. About 60% of the towns in my congressional district are 1,000 people or fewer. 85% are 5,000 people or fewer. And so I want to give you a little bit of a feel for what this government shutdown is doing um, to places like mine, places like Thompson, Illinois. The population in Thompson, Illinois, along the Mississippi River, is 590. 590. We have a federal prison there that employs 300 people, is ramping up to 600 people, or is supposed to ramp up to 600 people by the end of September. So think about a town where the, you basically double its population because of the federal prison. And now you've got the workers at this federal prison that aren't getting paid, as of tomorrow, missing two paychecks. This is a town that has zero stoplights. You know, we like to talk about towns with, you know, one stoplight or one stop sign towns. This is a town with zero stoplights. This is a town where the gas station doubles as the diner in town. And the town is hurting. And this is happening all over the country. We as Democrats have voted 11 times now to reopen the government. As we are sitting here, the Senate is doing something. Uh, we anticipate that it's not going to be coming, anything's going to be coming back to us to say, open up the government right now. So we want to give you all a feel about what communities all over this country are feeling. And that's why we wanted to have the mayors who are close to their own people in their own towns uh, to let you know what's going on. And uh, so I thank you again for being here. I thank our mayors for being here. I thank our members of Congress for being here. And I hope, this, I hope you'll all walk away with what this means to hardworking federal employees that total 800,000 and to their families, to their children, to their babysitters, to the local grocery stores, all of that. And I think you'll get a feel for that when we're done here today. With that, I would like to introduce Mayor Marty Walsh from the city of Boston. Massachusetts. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Congresswoman. And I want to uh, thank my colleagues, the mayors from around America that are here with me today. I want to thank the congressional delegation that's here today. Um, I've heard this a lot this week, but also for the last couple of weeks here in, in, in Boston, is, is what's the most important issue right now facing the city and the country? And it's our government shutdown. Um, this is something that, that affects not just the Capitol here in Washington. It affects each and every neighborhood that we represent each and every street that we represent. It affects many of the people that work for the federal government in our own cities. And it also affects the contractors that are working in our cities that will affect eventually if we don't open the government. It is so important. This has been, I have never seen a time where we've seen a congressional delegation and a group of mayor delegation get together to talk about an issue as important as this. And it's time now to act. It's time that this, the United States Senate acts and works on a piece, this piece of legislation and gets our government open. If I have a disagreement with my, my Boston City Council, government doesn't shut down. What we do is we go in a room, we might argue, we might disagree, but we come up with a compromise on legislation that's good for the people of the city of Boston. It's not my idea, it's all of our ideas. And that's the idea behind government. So we're here today to let the American people know that we are on your side and we're gonna continue not rest until we get a resolution. We're gonna work with our congressional delegation. We're gonna work with our senators around the United States of America. And we're asking our senators to put the people of your cities, your states, and your country first. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Walsh, and thank you, Representative Bustos. Thank you all. Um, I am Lizzie Fletcher, and I'm here representing the 7th Congressional District of Texas, which is in Houston. And I, too, have been talking to um, federal government employees that are in our city and in our district, and I'm so honored that our mayor, Sylvester Turner, has joined us here today to talk about this pressing issue. And you'll hear from him in a minute, but there's an important reason, as we talk about all of the lives that are affected 
for us to realize how far reaching this government shutdown is. And for example, for us in Houston, many of you will remember that we had a horrible Hurricane Harvey in August of 2017. And Americans from across the country were so generous in helping us recover. And this Congress was generous in helping us recover and appropriated funds to do so. But those funds are tied up right now in HUD. And we are waiting for HUD to promulgate rules so that we can have access. So when you think about all of the ways and all of the things that the federal government is doing and needs to do, we have to think about the impact. So people in my district and across our, across our region are suffering after Hurricane Harvey. They need access to their relief funds. And it's affecting so many people. I, too, have talked to federal prison guards and TSA agents and air traffic controllers and folks who work at the Johnson Space Center for NASA. And they are all working without paychecks or furloughed. We simply cannot govern by shutting down our government. It's not a responsible way to operate the government, and it's not what we were sent here to do. So I join my colleagues here in urging our colleagues in the Senate to take up the legislation that we have passed. We are ready to get the government open, and then to really talk about smart, border security solutions. We understand in Texas how important that is, and we know that we need to have a real conversation about the real facts. That's what we were sent here to do, and that's what we're ready to do. Thank you so much. I'm Al Green, and I represent the 9th Congressional District in Houston, Texas, and I'm honored to be here with Mayor Turner as well. I will share with you tersely a couple of points. I've met with the IRS employees and some of the stories are very sad. There are people who are suffering. One lady explained to me that she believes that she's going to have mental issues associated with this, and she believes that simply opening the government may not be enough to help her. She thinks she'll need some counseling. I'd also like to mention that we have a food bank that we are going to be working with over at a church because some of the employees are going to need that type of assistance. So I'm honored to work with our mayor, our community, my congresspersons, and look forward to having the government open. We need to open the government so that our people can be paid and so that we can then discuss other issues. Mayor Turner. To all of the congresspersons and to the mayors, uh, let me just uh, state four points very, very quickly. Uh, for those of us, I'm Mayor Sylvester Turner of the city of Houston. Uh, Hurricane Harvey was devastating. And the people in the city of Houston have been waiting 17 months. Now that we're at the point of starting to be able to provide assistance to thousands, uh, things are, are starting to slow up and will slow up quite a bit. Uh, the thousands of people, especially seniors and people in low-income communities and middle-income families, that's number one. Number two, uh, the shutdown is affecting our airport system. Uh, we have had to shut down the security checkpoints at Terminal B several times, and now it's affecting our custom agents as well. So public safety is a critical component, so please bear in mind that. The third point is that we established a federal employee relief fund over this weekend. Uh, in just two short days, we'll receive more than 10,000 hits from federal employees, um, and the numbers continue to grow. And I've been, since I've been here in D.C., uh, my people are saying, Mayor, we need more help to help these employees. And so uh, that's a critical uh, point. And then it's affecting federal grant dollars uh, that are, are not arriving to help our cities. So the need is, is there and it's increasing. We just need government to open up and, and do business. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Turner? Okay. Uh, Cindy? Good afternoon. I'm Congresswoman Cindy Axney from Iowa's 3rd District. I want to let you know that our district, which is comprised of Iowa's largest metropolitan area, the Des Moines metro area, as well as 15 other counties that are fairly rural, is facing deep hurt as a result of government being shut down. Uh, I'll a couple of stories that I think you'd be interested in hearing about. Our farmers who are feeding not only this country but people around this world are suffering. Uh, they have seen year after year declining uh, prices for their commodities. They have seen weather 
related disasters that have hurt their crops. Uh, we are now in the middle of a trade war, and now as a result of the government shutdown, our farmers are unable to get the loans they desperately need uh, to begin farming for this year. They've already missed the window on getting an early operating loan so that they could get the discount on the operating things that they need, like seed and fertilizer. So they're losing money on the back end, and they're losing money on the front end. And in our metro areas, we're seeing people uh, like a young man who's a federal worker, uh, a, a veteran. His mother lives, they live in Waukee. It's a suburb of the Des Moines area. Um, he is going to go without a paycheck again. Our veterans deserve better than this. Our federal workers deserve better than this. So across our district, we're seeing people uh, in very small communities up to our large communities suffering as a result of this. And I'll let Mayor County uh, expand on that. But I implore our Senate uh, to move forward, pass uh, a bill that will allow our government to reopen. This is unacceptable. People in Iowa, people across this district, across the state and the country are hurting. Thank you. Mayor County. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa is one of those places out in the middle of the uh, of the country, and uh, as Congresswoman Axney said, uh, we've got a variety of, of populace that's there. We got rural, we got suburban, we got urban, and I will say that uh, beginning this week, uh, our TSA people were all there, and I got to tell you, when I went through, I thanked every one of them that I came in contact with for their service and for hanging in there to protect the the safety of our our people. Uh, in travelers in the United States. It takes those kind of people to do it. But they also need a paycheck. And one of the things that we see affected at the city of Des Moines is public housing. Public housing uh, at the end of uh, probably uh, in February going into March, uh, we will uh, cease to, uh, to get supportive funds. Now hopefully we can dip into some of our own and we'll get reimbursed, but who knows. And uh, that will affect 3,500 people. And if they don't get paid, they don't get their Section 8 vouchers, uh, then what happens? Guess what? They get evicted. And the same of those public workers that are out there, they're not getting their paychecks. They're going to go home one of these days, and they're going to find their mattress out on the curb, and they're going to find uh, uh, all their belongings out there because they couldn't pay the rent. This isn't fair. This is something that we have to turn around. This is something that, that uh, we have to work from the local level to support our elected officials. Let's get government open. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Mayor Briley of the great city of Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, every morning I get up to go to work for the 600,000 people who live in Nashville and Davidson County. And uh, I do not have the luxury to shut down our Metro Nashville public school system or to stop working on affordable housing or to focus on improving our transit and transportation network in Nashville. I don't have the luxury of shutting that down. Uh, unfortunately, in the last few weeks, I have had to work on an additional list of things. Uh, just this morning, we announced in Nashville a program with our water and electric services to uh, give um, an extension to all the federal workers who've been furloughed. I don't need to be working on that. Catholic Charities, one of our important charities in Nashville, just went out to TSA to feed the workers who are working for a living every day and deserve a paycheck. Catholic Charities has better things to do. We also are trying to work with the Department of Justice to improve public safety in Nashville. And instead of working hard with them to make that progress, we're waiting. We are waiting. We don't have the luxury, mayors don't have the luxury of shutting down. And what has happened in the last few weeks is that inaction and gridlock here has added a list of tasks to our already too long list. So I, and I know every other mayor here, is here today to say, please get together, vote on those things you agree on, because there are so many things that people, everybody agrees on, and open the government back up. President, please stop holding the citizens of Nashville hostage. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Congressman Bustos. I want to thank everyone who stands here, uh, in particular the mayors, for, for sharing the stories. We've heard the stories of the impact this is having and the thank yous for the workers who are serving our nation without pay. And the stories of the people in the, our communities, our neighbors, who are coming to the support of these workers to help them. 
But the only way we can address this issue is ultimately opening up this government. And this impact is not just this, – this closure is not just having an impact on the federal workers who are not getting paid, on their families who are bearing this burden, on our communities. It's affecting our national security. The FBI is being put in a situation where agents are working understaffed, under-resourced. They're having to delay indictments or put on the back burner investigations. Our TSA agents, our air traffic controllers are in a situation working without pay. Aircraft, air, air traffic controllers are working six days a week, but they don't have the support services, so they're working under greater stress on the job and then have the stress of going home without a paycheck. Our Coast Guard, the men and women who are protecting our shores, our rivers, our lakes, in the middle of winter conducting search and rescue missions, in the middle of winter making sure that our communities are safe. For the first time in our nation's history, we have men and women in uniform serving our nation, standing their post and not getting paid. The House of Representatives has passed 11 bills to open up this government since January 3rd. The Senate just failed today to pass one bill to do that. We need to get this government open because the people who are being hurt, the communities that are being affected, are looking to us to take the right action to get the government open and people working and getting paid. It is my honor now to introduce uh, the mayor of North Chicago in my district, Leon Rockingham. Sure. Thank you. And I just want to say to the Congress members here and to the mayors here, thank you for coming out and, and, and voicing the concern that we all have. Again, my name is Leon Rockingham. I'm the mayor of the city of North Chicago. North Chicago is home to Naval Station Great Lakes. The only recruit training center in the United States is in our town. We have the James A. Lovell Healthcare Center, a VA hospital, also in our community. And our concern in, in, our, in North Chicago is the fact that, you know, my chief of police has a, a concern that the FBI that he needs to contact on issues that may affect the, the naval base or the VA hospital, he will not have that opportunity. Thank God there's no, nothing that has happened at this point. But if, if there's a concern that happens, you know, we want to be able to make sure that the government is open. We have the, the people and the resources, especially through the FBI, to take care of this, any situation that may happen. So thank you. I, I would hope that the government would reopen soon. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, Mayor Rockingham. Uh, I next would like to introduce uh, Mayor Sam Cunningham, uh, the mayor of Waukegan, Illinois, the largest community in my district. Thank you, Congressman Snyder, and to my colleagues here, and to all of you. I come with a different story, a story of professionals. All of these governmental workers who are not receiving checks, they're professionals. Let me tell you why I think that. Just recently, we had three young men uh, out on our pier, and they had an accident where they fell in. Guess who was there for the recovery and rescue mission? That U.S. Coast Guard who has a base in the city of Waukegan. Here are folks who are doing things because it's their job and what they want to do. Let's get this government open so they can be rewarded for the jobs they do. So I thank all of my colleagues, to all of our U.S. representatives and senators, it's time to do the work to help not only them, but the front line get this open for those who are out there doing their job. And as we leave here and you go back to your homes in the airports, a simple thank you will be great for those who are not getting a paycheck. Take care. God bless. Thank you, Mayor. Congressman DeGoose from Colorado. Well, so uh, first I just want to say thank you to Sherry for pulling this together and, of course, to the mayors for participating. Uh, as Sherry said, we have voted to open the government 11 times in the United States House of Representatives. These are continuing resolutions that were bipartisan. Multiple Republicans have voted for them in the House. And time after time, we sent them over to the Senate, and the Senate refused to take a vote, extending and extending this shutdown further and further. Uh, my understanding, based on what we've just recently heard, is that the, uh, the clean CR that the House sent to the Senate uh, failed a few moments ago. Again, multiple Republicans actually voting for it, from my understanding. Mitt Romney voting for that bill. Uh, Senator Alexander out of uh, Tennessee voting for it. I would challenge 
Every United States senator who voted against that continuing resolution, the clean bipartisan resolution to simply reopen government, how they can possibly look the TSA agents in the eye when they go fly back home tonight or tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, knowing that these folks who are keeping them safe are not getting paid. Uh, it is beyond me. Uh, I may be new here to this institution. I'm a you know, freshman uh, representing Colorado 2nd District, uh, but this is not how government is supposed to function. 800,000 people will now go without a paycheck for the second time in a month tomorrow. Half of those people are still working, being forced to work without pay. It is a travesty. It needs to end now. Uh, I, I, I am very frustrated, as I know all my colleagues are and as the mayors are here today. Um, and I would also recommend every person here to go, you know, if you haven't seen it, my senator earlier today, Michael Bennett, uh, spoke on the floor of the Senate. And he was visibly frustrated, as am I, about the state uh, of, uh, of our government right now and the inability of the Senate to get anything done and reopen the government. I would urge every person to watch that uh, because he was expressing the frustration that we are all feeling. And I certainly know that my mayors are feeling that as well. Uh, I'm lucky to have uh, Mayor Hancock uh, of the great city county of Denver here, as well as uh, my, my mayor uh, in my city, the mayor of Boulder, Suzanne Jones, uh, here to, to be able to talk a little bit about what they are experiencing at the ground level. So Mayor Hancock first. And Thank you, Congressman Goose. Let me just, the Goose, let me take uh, this from a different angle. Every one of us up here following our elections took the oath to serve and protect the citizens that we have been elected to serve. But when you allow for our air traffic controllers with the FAA uh, to be overstressed, overworked, and unpaid, you've now taken the most, uh, the safest aviation system in the world and you've imperiled it. Mr. President, we need to open up this government. When you don't allow for project managers at the FTA to sign off on critical transportation and transit programs, like we're waiting for in Denver, Colorado, you've now put every citizen who are, who are trying to move about in our transit system in peril. Mr. President, we need to open up this government. When people are going to have their SNAP benefits and WIC benefits and housing vouchers cut in March, we have now put the health and well-being of seniors persons with disabilities, and our low-income people in peril. Mr. President, United States Senate, we need to open up this government. Last month, the city of Denver decided to dip in its housing funds that are used for low-income individuals to create a temporary mortgage assistance program for our federal employees. We have now stressed that fund because we're going to cover our federal employees who happen to be residents of our great city. Mr. President, we need to open up this government and stop stressing the people, the 800 federal employees who work for this great country and for all those who are beneficiaries of the services and entitlements of this country. And so I'm proud to also represent the United States Conference of Democratic Mayors. We are unified in our message to say very clearly to the President and the United States Senate, open up this government as soon as possible. I'm glad to yield to my friend, the great mayor of Boulder, Colorado, Mayor Suzanne Jones. I'm honored to be a part of this group asking for this shutdown to end. It is absolutely unacceptable. In addition to the real people that are being hurt by this, I also want to say really important work is being disrupted. Boulder, Colorado is home to 17 federal laboratories, and it goes from NOAA labs, who are doing important weather monitoring it includes NIST that does measurements that all these local um, companies are depending on to pursue their commerce. It includes the National Center for Atmospheric Research, which is uh, doing important research on climate. Um, this is important work, and it's all being disrupted. Some of those folks are considered essential. Some are not. None of them are getting paid, and all of their work is being disrupted, and all um, for unnecessary political reasons. So real people are being hurt, and we need real action from our leaders. So please end the shutdown. Thank you, Mayor. Congressman Butterfield from North Carolina. Thank you. First, let me thank Congresswoman Bustos for her friendship and her leadership, and most importantly, thank all of the mayors for coming to Capitol Hill today to stand with us as we stand against the Trump administration in day 34 of the shutdown. Uh, make no mistake about it, this is a Trump 
McConnell shutdown. Uh, we spent the early part of uh, the last 34 days calling this a Trump shutdown, but we want you to know uh, very clearly that Senator McConnell is complicit uh, in the shutdown. He has the ability, he had the ability this afternoon uh, to uh, reopen the government. Two proposals on the floor of the United States Senate today. Uh, each one would have reopened the government. One contained President Trump's uh, proposal from last Saturday uh, to uh, build the wall, which we vehemently opposed. But the other one was Senator Schumer's proposal, and that was to extend funding through February 28th, add disaster assistance to the bill, and let's reopen government, let's sit down, and let's negotiate. 800,000 federal workers are out of work, without a paycheck. Tomorrow will be their second paycheck that will be missed. But the point we must make to you today is that 80 percent of the federal workers who are, who are furloughed do not live in the greater metro Washington, D.C. area. Area. They are in communities all across the country. These mayors represent these federal workers who are furloughed. And so we call on President Trump. We call again on, on Senator McConnell. Let's reopen this government. Let's come back here tomorrow morning or Saturday or Sunday morning. Let's sit at the table and let's work this out. Uh, I bring these greetings to you today on behalf of our Democratic leadership, uh, uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and our Majority Leader and our Majority Whip, uh, Congressman Jim Clyburn, of which I am a Chief Deputy whip and therefore can speak for the leadership. So thank you so very much for coming. Do you have any more titles? Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, with that, we are happy. Anybody up here is happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Okay. Everybody good? Please. Thank you. Yes. Make it room for you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Salt Lake City Mayor Jackie Biskupski. And for us in our community, we run an international airport and we also rely on federal employees to help us keep our watershed clean. Right now I have Salt Lake City employees who are in the forest who are doing that work on behalf of the federal government, stressing our own base of employees in city government. We also are working diligently to create a loan program for the federal employees who are going without a second paycheck. We are hoping to have that program up and running next week. But I think what you've heard from everyone here today, the impacts of this are beyond just the federal employees. And it is seeping into every aspect of our cities and our governments. We absolutely must get this government reopened. The negotiations need to take place without hostages. And we have to move forward as quickly as possible if we are not going to send ourselves into a recession. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, go ahead, sir. And then after, after you, uh, our chairman of our budget committee, John Yarmouth from the state of Kentucky, will speak after you. Okay. Steve Adler, Mayor of Austin, Texas. You know, I'll tell you on the streets in Austin, when this started off, it was just yet another kind of partisan battle, and we took it in stride. Uh, but it now has turned into something different. This is a betrayal of basic trust. In addition to the issues that you've already heard, cities now having to step forward like Austin to, to augment food pantries, to give emergency utility relief in our city. We have our police department and, 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 and restaurants in town that are rushing pizzas and, and, and barbecue to TSA people working. This is a fundamental betrayal of trust. And I'll give you an example of one of a thousand. We have spent years building trust with landlords in our city so that they accept homeless populations with Section 8 vouchers, homeless vets in our community with VASH vouchers. And the way that we have done that is we have said that that check on behalf of those people will be in your mailbox on the first of every, uh, first of every month. And it was that promise and that trust and that faith that has enabled us to make any headway against homelessness in our community. And we are about to come up on the first, and those checks are not going to be there. And when those checks are not going to be there, it is going to take us years again to recover from this. This is not right. This is a betrayal of trust. People should be paid for the work that we're doing. We need the Senate and the President to end this. Chairman Yarman. Thank you, Sherry. Yes. Uh, just a couple of things to add. One of the things is that I want to talk about is we've had some comments out of some members of the and representatives of the administration that are among the crassest cold-hearted comments I think I've ever heard. People who have absolutely no understanding of the types of people who are being affected by this. Like one, one uh, cabinet official said, well, this is like volunteering. 
when they're working for nothing. Other people minimizing the impact. They should be able to get by. In my district, and I think across the country, these are people who are making $14, $15, $16 an hour. These are people who live paycheck to paycheck. I have 1,700 census workers who live in my district and the adjacent district. They've been furloughed for a month. These are people who don't make a lot of money. These are people whose lives are being uprooted, in many cases destroyed. We have people with health issues, with child care issues. You name it, you've heard all of the stories. But the biggest problem we have right now, I think, is a total lack of empathy and understanding on the part of this administration who doesn't understand the true hardships and pain that are being caused out there. So we, we can't lose real people not making a lot of money. These are not <clears throat> soft bureaucrats making six figures. These are people working very, very on an hourly wage, working very, very hard for all of us. And we need to pay them the respect that they deserve. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. I want to thank the members of the press and for our guests here today for, for coming here. And uh, one more chance. Anybody have questions? You all good? All right. Thanks, everybody. Hi everyone, my name's Mike, I'm the creator of Mox News, and uh, for the last 15 years I have been telling you that uh, as long as I have the support of the community that I serve, Mox News will post videos forever. And that's the truth, as long as I have your support, no one could ever make me stop. Unfortunately, currently, less than one half of one tenth of one percent of Mox News viewers ever donate, tip, or contribute anything back. Again, let me make that really clear. Much less than one half of one tenth of one percent ever give anything back. And to those of you who have donated to Mox News, I want to thank you so much because it's because of your generosity that we have been able to bring attention to important videos that millions and millions of eyes would have never seen. And I think that that's a, a, an amazing thing that we've been able to make happen together. And I can't thank you enough for helping me make that happen. So it's not too late. If you'd like to see Mox News covering the 2020 presidential election, if you can't imagine the 2020 presidential election without Mox News, please, there's still time. You can make a difference. It's easy to make a contribution, donation, or tip. Uh, you can go to moxnews.com or in the text body of this video, there are clickable links to the Patron page or to um, the PayPal page. And, and Again, it should take less than two minutes to make a donation, and your donation can make a big difference. So I thank you all. Stay cool. One of these days this war is going to end, and it would be awesome if Mox News could be there to celebrate that day with you.